On this week's episode of Rangeless, we're heading to Da Nang to eat our way through all the street food. But first, we're heading through the dreaded High Van Pass, one of the most dangerous roads in the world. The High Van Pass is widely considered one of the best coastal driving roads in the world. But for the unprepared, it can prove deadly. The High Van Pass is a steep mountain road with only small barriers between drivers and a sharp fall off the side of the mountain. There are many aggressive turns and switchbacks which are part of the appeal and what makes the road so famous. However, along this coastal road, thick fog often rolls in at a moment's notice. Couple this with the slew of trucks and buses that use the road and the hairpin bends and you can start to see how it earned its dangerous reputation. And if that wasn't enough, the steep sections of the pass are especially prone to landslides and rainy weather. We saw multiple scars on the hillside and closed sections of road due to recent landslides. It is improving though. Since 2005, a new high-speed tunnel through the mountain was opened diverting the majority of the heavy traffic. Wow. wow. That is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I want to go back up. <laughs> Once you come through the top of the pass, everything, you're covered in, in mist and you see the mist coming down off the mountain and you come around the corner and everything just opens out in front of you. There's this beautiful bay and the city in the background over there covered in mist and then just the sunlight coming in and hitting everything perfectly. It looks like a city in the sky. All right. I think this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. Wow. The camera is definitely not gonna do this justice here. But does it ever? No. Really? But it's gorgeous. The sun is getting ready to set though. Yeah, we need to start moving. It's gonna get dark. Yeah. We're gonna be on the roads after dark. Yeah. But we're gonna be in a city, so it's a little bit different than the last time we got stuck out in the dark out on the mountain roads. Once we get through this pass, which we're almost through, we're at the halfway point, we're going down now. Uh, it, we're in a city, so there's street lights, it's lit up, it's not dark like it like it was when we got stuck. Up in the north. All right, let's go. And I'm hungry. On. Let's go, let's go, we gotta go. <laughs> I made that mistake once. We arrived at the hotel, dropped our bags, and immediately went out in search of dinner. Okay. I saw little tables with plastic stools, and that's how I know it's good stuff. Manzil. That was fast. So it looks like we got some noodles, peanut sauce, cucumber. Have you ever tried one of these little rice crackers? No. Okay. So you can buy these at the store and they're like really little and when you put them in the oil to fry they expand. Alright, So we got two different kinds of skewers. One is beef and it's wrapped in some type of leaf and the other one is a pork skewer. I'm gonna do the pork first. Okay, I'll do but it. But I'm gonna dip it in some of this peanut sauce. I want to bite it first so I can get like the flavor. Fairly simple, what you would expect, but they're good. Pork with some herbs. Almost like a pork sausage. Oh, these are like split. And this is beef. <laughs> oh, these are really nice. I like the bit it. Okay. The leaf is like fried and like really crunchy from, I think it's been from being on the grill. Okay. Try the noodles. Noodles with pork, papaya and carrot salad, cucumbers, peanut sauce. I think it's the same sauce that we're dipping stuff in. We're both starving, huh? Oh yeah, not a lot of talking mm. going on. I love the cucumber in it. All we had was one soup today, is it? I know. We're gonna end up ordering more food 
Why don't we go somewhere else? Oh, why don't we do that? I want to go walk around a bit. I'm going to teach you how to make a bun zeal. If you want to take the rice paper, and you want to take a piece. If you watch our videos, you'll see we had this same thing at the duck stop. So it's like flour, bean sprouts. This looks like it has pork or something in it. Then you want to take some of your vegetables, cucumber and green papaya, and a little bit of carrots. Put it together. And you want to roll it up like a spring roll. Then we got more of that peanut sauce that was on the noodles. I'm just going to dip it in. So good. That was really good food. Really, really good. So these are what we were trying to get in Hue last night. The line was too long, so we're going to try and get it here. Can we get two of these? Now I'm excited. They got the laughing cow. They got some spring onions. They got some, don't know what this is. And I don't know what that is. It looks like some sort of chili flakes. Oh yeah. You know you said yes to cheese and a weird wiener, right? I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we're getting one then. Yes. Ryan got a weird wiener and cheese put in it. I didn't mean to. It's hot. Wow, it's good. It's punching like a hard taco, but it's really sweet on the inside and also spicy. And that laughing cow cheese is actually really good in there. It's nice. I really like the Nang. Me too. It's like a modern city. It's really clean. It's got good vibes. It's more open than the other cities we've been in, like spaces wise. No, it's nice, especially in this area that we're in down by the, the river, like just on. By the Dragon Bridge. But we decided it was time for dessert. Or I decided that I wanted. A drink. A drink. And then I was like, he was, Ryan was like, what do you want? I was like, a smoothie. But then we walked in this place and I was like, never mind, ice cream. But someone got excited, and now we're gonna have two ice creams and a smoothie. I might have got excited. I regret nothing. Ice cream came. What flavor did you get? I got the strawberry flavor. I got coconut flavor. With chocolate and peanuts and coconut mm -hmm. on top. Cheers. Cheers. There is like few things in this world that's just wholesomely as good as ice cream. Like if anyone was like, I don't like ice cream, I don't trust them. This is the kind of double fisting that I like in my life. <laughs> ice cream and mango smoothie. Is it good? Yeah. That's really good. Mm -hmm. It's not too sweet either. No. It shouldn't be, it's literally just mangoes blended up. Mm. Exactly what it should be. You have a second stomach for all sweets and desserts. I have a second stomach for mango smoothies. You ready to go? Yeah. It's not even eight o'clock, I'm so tired. Yesterday evening, I liked the high van pass so much that I decided to get up early this morning and come back out here. I wasn't here only two minutes and then the cops were there trying to move people along. I went down the hill a little bit to the next side and there's a little spot here where you can pull in. I've had to stop for a coffee at the top of the high van pass because by the looks of things, the only place to park up there is at a cafe. That's why the cops are down there driving everyone off the road. Like, you can't stop at the viewpoint. They want to drive you up here so you spend the money. It's worth the view, to be honest with you. Just look at this. Another reason why this road is so dangerous is 
as well as like the buses and the trucks and everything that'll be flying. I don't think it's uncommon for landslides. Like I've seen three of them and I've only been here today, so they didn't happen when I was here, but the aftermath like behind me, they cleared the road, but the damage is still done. We actually got lucky the time that we're here because we're here on TED and this is the day after the TED holiday, the start of the TED holiday. So the trucks and the buses aren't as as common. There's, I only seen a couple buses, but normally this place is flying with big heavy trucks and buses and everything. Since they built the tunnel, that's gone down a lot, but they still come up this way. I was out on the High Van Pass this morning and I pulled in at that viewpoint looking out over Da Nang, over the bay and everything. And then the cops showed up and they started like blocking people in and like making them produce all their papers and all this stuff. And I didn't have mine with me because they were here. No, they're in the folder. So I didn't have like the papers to prove the bike was owned by style or anything. So I was like, I gotta get out of here real quick. And they were finding people left, right and center just for stopping there. So I went up, went over the top of the pass, went to the other spot that we stopped the night before. Then I went back up, and the only place that you could park up there was at the cafes and stuff at the very top. So I pulled in there, that's my mistake, and I got a coffee. That's my mistake. Because while it allowed me to leave the bike there and fly the drone and do whatever for about 20 minutes, that 20 minutes went by and then all of a sudden my stomach was rumbling. <laughs> So I ran up there to the up behind the cafe to use the bathroom there, and that was not a good idea. There was no toilet paper. It was you just didn't a. Have your tissues. I forgot about them. I was in a panic. Okay. And all there was was a little bucket with a little a little bucket inside the little bucket. With and the little, with the ladle. Yeah, it was like a cut up bottle of water, like the bottom of it. I was like, I gotta go back to the hotel real quick. But that was 45 minutes ago. It was a 45 minute ride. But yeah, I've been holding it. After meeting up with Brit in the hotel, we went out into the city for breakfast. This morning we are eating our way through Da Nang, which I'm so excited about. This city is such a food city. They have amazing restaurants. They have so much fusion. Anything that you can think of, for the most part, from around the world, they have it here in Da Nang. But today, we're going on a food tour and we want some of Da Nang's specialties. Unlike a lot of the other cities here in Vietnam, it is not a fuss city. So unlike Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi, they have pho here, but that is not what they are known for. Being so close to the ocean, they have amazing seafood. Bomb Me is their unofficial, official street food snack. And we're gonna go try a bunch of it. We're starting off this morning with Bun Cha Cha Chan. I know I'm butchering it, but it is a fish soup and you can get all different kinds of fish but we stuck with the classics. One of the things that's special about it is it has shrimp paste in it. Now this is not so special if you are Vietnamese or eat Vietnamese food all the time but it is something that's polarizing among travelers. People either love it or they hate it. We got big bowls big of deliciousness. Bowls. I'm so excited about it. And then we have all of the condiments and all the things that you can add to it, as well as my favorite, the herbs and the bean sprouts. I like to try the broth first. And like... That's really good. Spicy fish with like a really, really savory flavor that I can't pin down, but. That's the shrimp paste. That's the shrimp paste? Yeah, like it has this like level of depth. Ah. Yeah. It's in a lot of the different broths around. You just don't really notice, and I've never like explicitly said it to you. Yeah. But I have them. We've been in the markets. If you watch our videos, you've heard me be like, "Brian's like, what's that smell of, like a shrimp paste?" There is like fish cakes. And... Yep. Everything in here. You get some bean sprouts in there. Brian's a big fan of the bean sprouts. I love bean sprouts. They're good. I remember the first time I ever fed him bean sprouts. I was like, "Do you like bean sprouts?" And he was like, "Um." I don't know what that is. I like them. Anytime we go anywhere, he's like beans wrapped, beans wrapped, beans wrapped. I like the pickled vegetables. Pickled onion, pickled carrots. This is the shrimp paste. It definitely has a really strong aroma. It's fermented. 
But it's really flavorful. Like it's. Like it's a, you don't need a lot of it. It's just a, just a little bit, but it gives it like a whole depth. Of yeah. People either love it or they hate it. Mmm. That was really good. Whatever that was. I think it was a fish cake. Mm. I really like fish cake a lot. Mm. Like this. It's like garlic, mince, and chili. And a fun story about this is not that long ago, Ryan and I, it, you just need a little bit though. Like that's probably too much. Ryan and I were in a restaurant and they had like the, the pickled garlic and chilies. I was like, yeah, that's garlic and chilies in there. Put some in your soup. It's really good. It's pickled. And he starts like just, just scooping all of it. And I'm watching him. And and he is scooping the chili seeds into his soup. Just scooping them. And yeah, scooping just them and dropping them all them. in, thinking that they're like minced garlic. He thought it was minced garlic. But the, the garlic was like sliced. And floating on the top. And floating on the top. But I was like, no, the garlic's in the bottom. Let me get some of that. And... Yeah, I regretted that decision. The total for the two bowls was 70,000 Vietnamese dong. So it's 35,000 dong a piece, which is $45, $50. Not a bad deal. The iconic Dragon Bridge here in Da Nang is a huge tourist attraction. Every night it is lit up with all different colored lights and every Friday, Saturday and Sunday night at 9 p.m. the dragon breathes fire. What do you think about a bridge that breathes fire? I think it's a safety hazard, but I think it's really cool. I mean, why not? If you can, why not to design a bridge to breathe fire? I've heard about this great place that does these sweet and savory donuts that you dip in chili sauce. I'm hoping that it's open because it is Tet, but I'm hoping that it's open because I have a second stomach just for sweeties. I'm ready to go. It's closed. But it's fine because I know of a place that's going to taste just as good. Just different. We are at a cafe and Brittany told me she ordered something very fancy for me. I ordered fancy drinks. But cafe culture here in Da Nang is huge. You will see these adorable little coffee shops and cafes all over the city. The entire menu was in Vietnamese, so I'm not like 100% sure on what I ordered. Oh. I think I did, I think I did order fancy. Wow. Okay, so we got matcha with some type of jelly situation in it, and we got a coconut coffee. Wow. Which one do you want to try first? This one. You want to try the coconut one? So, okay, so I'll try the matcha. I'm a big matcha fan, and there's like jellies and boba and other things in here that I am not sure. It looks like tofu. And I got a jelly too. It's like really good matcha. Like really Alright, you want to try this coconut coffee. Even after what coffee did to you this morning, you're gonna hang with them again. I don't hold it against coffee. Sometimes it burns me, but most of the time it's a friend. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Then you don't even like coconut. No, but if you mix it with coffee, it's really good. It's like sweetener for it. Did this make up for the savory sweet donut shop being closed? Yeah, this made up for it. I'm happy now. Now that we got our sippy sips in and fully caffeinated, Ryan's never seen a monkey in the wild. So never, ever. I'm very excited to see a monkey in the wild. Well, we, you're not guaranteed to see a monkey, I don't think. Well, that's why they're in the wild. I don't know if I'm going to see one or not. It's wild. So where are we going? To Monkey Mountain. <laughs> Sounds not real. There was an army base set up here in Da Nang, and Monkey Mountain was where they were sent to do their, like... R&R. R&R, yeah. And they called it Monkey Mountain as a nickname. It's not the actual name of the mountain, but... But it just stuck. Yeah, like 30 minutes out, outside the city. And there are a bunch of hikes and stuff you can do there, but because we are only here for one day, I think we're just going to zoom around on the motorbike and try to see a monkey. We got lucky and spotted two wild monkeys on the side of the road as we were driving up Monkey Mountain. Monkeys. <laughs> I've, I've never seen them in the wild before. That's really cool. I've only ever seen them in zoos. It's nice to be able to see them in their natural habitat where they're not in a cage. <laughs> 
I heard, well, I saw on Google Maps that this is some kind of viewpoint. So I want to see what the view is of. What is it? That's the high van pass where we came yesterday. Down from the mountain, right there. Right out over there. Is where we came down through the mountains and we came along the bay to the city. It's hard to see with the fog, but. This is Monkey Mountain. I think it was worth coming up. It was free. You just need a geared motorbike. You can't take a, an automatic motorbike up here. So a semi-auto is fine. He said, no problem. And there's no charge. It's nice up here. And we got to see monkeys. You think we allowed up there? I don't know, there's a road right there. Hey, it looks abandoned. It does look abandoned. I doubt you're allowed like near it. Probably not. But you might get a view of the city from up there. Cause that looks like- city on our way up? Yeah, I did, did you? It was cool. That's what I want to take a look at. The sign says restricted area, no trespassing. Right there. There goes that idea. All right, well, I'm sure there's another spot where we can get a nice view of the city though. Is this a loop or do we have to turn around and go back? No, there's several paths. There's like different entrances. We came in on one, there's three in total with checkpoints at each one. It's an eco conservation area, probably because of the monkeys and the wildlife and the birds and things. No, I think we're right here, cow cow. I figure we could just keep going and down the, and then back. 20, 22 minutes okay, to do the loop. That's where we just were over there, the f two furthest radar towers, and then we passed the other one here on the way here. Now, you definitely need a manual bike to get up these hills. There's 18 degree slopes coming up, 18% slopes. Let's go up here. There's supposed to be a nice viewpoint up here from the top of this peak. From up here, you can see the whole city underneath us. I'm gonna go back to the bike because I'm a little worried because I didn't think and I left my helmet there and there's monkeys. So I don't want it getting stolen by a monkey. So have fun at your lookout. I'll be down by the bikes. I can hear monkeys in the trees. Didn't see any monkeys on the top of Monkey Mountain. But we saw them on the way up on the road. <sighs> The monkeys didn't steal your helmet? The monkeys didn't steal my helmet. That's good. Yeah, monkeys will steal anything though. Ready? Can we go down here? It's telling me to go down this way. Because there was a landslide, but the gate's open, so it should be fine. It should be fine. Let's go down and see. Okay. The gate's open. The road is blocked. The deeper we got in here, the more I think we weren't supposed to go through there. Yeah, I was thinking that when I saw all the dirt on the road and there's no other tracks that's been here for a while. But I was also curious. Looks like a landslide took out, took out the road a little bit down and they're still repairing the road. So I saw a couple on the way back up as well, but they didn't completely wipe out the road. And there's guard dogs, guard puppies. Hi, guard puppies. Hello. I guess we head back the way we came. The road that Ryan had us going to should have taken us back and like made it a loop. But because it was washed out, looks like we're headed back the way we came. But we might see more monkeys, who knows? So that's all that really matters is the monkeys. It's steep though, going up. Like that was squealing coming down because I was Try not to use the brakes, I was just putting it in a first gear, leaving it roll down the hill. It was like, it was not happy. But I didn't want to cook my brakes and then have none. And every time we had to go uphill, I was just going past you. It's not my fault your bike's got more torque than mine. I saw you were in second gear and you're just it going was. straight past me, and mine was like, no, I dropped down to first then afterwards, and that was the only way I was able to keep up with you. Mm -hmm. well, sucks to suck, man. A little Honda. So why did we stop abruptly? It was causing me to crash the bike. For this. Again. It's a pretty 
pretty to pretty view. He does this for monkeys and viewpoints. That's all I care about is monkeys and viewpoints. Fair enough, you can argue that one. This is a good viewpoint. After Monkey Mountain, we stopped off for a walk along the beach. It's warm. Yeah. Even on an overcast day like today. Now you can say you dipped your fingers in the South China Sea. We found some classic fishing boats with some beautiful paintings on them. If you do any searches online with like Vietnam and with the water and the ocean and fishing, these boats are what you're gonna find there. But these have been decorated, I believe, for Ted. I think I like the whale one. I've spied some banh mi. Now, Da Nang is not known for their banh mi, but it is their unofficial, official snack. We're gonna go get one. Uh, can I get one banh mi? Spicy, yeah. Going wild. It's a traditional sandwich you'll find all over Vietnam. It contains pate, herbs, sometimes some vegetables, and primarily pork, but it can have a variety of different things in it. It comes from when the French were here and they brought their delicious bread. Now here in Da Nang, you will sometimes find the bami sandwiches made instead of on like the French baguettes on the round Portuguese rolls, but we haven't been able to find any. But we like them no matter what shape they are. Thank you. Thank you. 20,000, so less than a dollar. I was snacking, not snacking, but I wanted to be snacking. <laughs> All your dreams come true. You wanted to be snacking, and here you are. Here I am, snacking. I think I need another bite. That's really good. The bread is like less dense than French bread. It seems, feels like lighter. I think there's pork in here and some sausage, some herbs, definitely chilies in there. Really good, really fast, affordable snack keep you going on your day. Ryan has so graciously decided he will, in fact, share some of this sandwich with me. Herbs, pork, the sausage, the spicy from the chilies, that like fat that's like so satiating from the pate, the freshness from the herbs, it's a balanced sandwich. Plus this bread is like super crispy and crunchy on the outside. I'm a textures gal when it comes to my food, and I like that. Da Nang is famous not just for their seafood, but how it's kept and served to you. So you can go and see all of your seafood. It's kept in like fish tanks, and that's what makes Da Nang so special in how the seafood process works. Literally like four years ago, I had oysters here with like, there were peanuts on them. They came out, I was like, there is no way that these peanut oysters are gonna be good. And four years later, I still think about them. Now these look slightly different than the last ones I had, but it's a different place. But I'm hoping they're just as good. They are barbecued, which I don't, whatever that means. I think they're clams. And they have peanuts and chili and herbs, and there's like juice in there. And I'm so excited. They're just as good as I remember them. They're so stinking good. They're spicy and creamy, and have so much flavor, so much herbs. I love Da Nang seafood. I'll try it. I'm excited after that reaction. I've heard good things. Oh yeah, you can smell the peanut. Ain't like nothing you ever had, but oh. so freaking good. It's so smooth. Mm -hmm. And like creamy, and then a little bit of a kick at the end. That's really good. Right, peanuts on, on shellfish, I would have been like absolutely hard now. And they just brought over a seafood noodle as well. It looks like there's herbs and noodles and some squid and tiny little prawns. I'm gonna try a piece of the squid. The sauce is like a soy sauce with chilies in it. Okay. So good. 
just try a piece of swift. Wow. That's probably the best squid I've ever had. Yeah. It's like not chewy in the least. No. Yeah. It's like tender. Mm -hmm. I'd like some squid too. I don't think he was going to share them. I just saw him putting them all on his plate. And then he would have ate them all and been like, oh, I didn't know. Why didn't you take any? And I said, it had been like, because you already had them all in your bowl. So how would you like the clams? Those were the best clams I've ever had. Right? I know. I know. Oh, yeah. Show our friends. What's this then? Oh, it's good. Oh, it's spicy. Proceed with caution. <gasps> did you see? Do you see what color it is? Oh wow! It's green. A green fish. Green fish. Maybe. Oh, I know what it is. It's a pair of fish. It's so freaking good. Try a little bit. Try, here. I'm taking too long. Wow. Yeah. I told you, Da Nang seafood is just different. They just do it better. They just do it better. And the, the herbs, and a little bit of chili, and, and the fish is just so, like fresh. that. Fresh. Because it was just in the tank. And the texture of the fish itself is like, melt in your mouth. It, it is literally falling apart in your mouth. And you don't even need to chew it. I think you're supposed to put some in this lettuce leaf. And it's so crispy on the outside. It's so good. It's so good. You're supposed to roll it up in the leaf? I don't know, but I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. I have no idea if this is what you're supposed to do. But here I am. And I'm going to dip it in this green sauce. It's like thick, but like be careful because it is spicy. Oh my gosh, so good. The leaves are like peppery flavor. I don't know if this is against community guidelines or not, but this little bit right here, it's this bit, this cheek right here, now that I've completely obliterated it, is the most tender. You notice that eyeball? Huh? You can eat that eyeball. Where is it? In its eye socket. What does it taste like? Eyeball. Right I've, first eyeball. My first eyeball. Feel not it. happy about it. Not happy about it. Some people really like them. I don't. It, but like, it's also you're eating an eyeball, so it freaked me out. Like crunchy on the outside because it's been barbecued, and then just like watery on yeah. the inside. Didn't really like it. Not a fan. <sighs> I need to put that out of my memory. I'll eat pretty much anything once. Yeah. Are you gonna eat that other eyeball? No. Not. You can have it if you want it. I don't like it. But I will pass on that one. What are your thoughts after spending the day in Tanang? I really like Tanang. I think very livable city, very modern, very clean, um, beautiful scenery, like mountains 20 minutes away. So if you want to go for a hike, no big deal. How do you feel about Da Nang? I love Da Nang. I loved Da Nang in the last time I was here, and I love it still. And I feel like Da Nang's probably even better when you live here. You know how some places are, I think. are better to just visit and then leave because they're made for tourists? I don't think this is made for tourists. But there's definitely areas that are made for tourists, like along the beach is made for tourists. So you have your big resorts, you have all the things, you know, that go along with being beachfront. But I think as a city, Da Nang is made for the people to live there. Mm -hmm. It's made for a well-lived life. Just paying the bill. It's 580 Vietnamese dollars, which is about... 20 bucks. About 20 bucks for a seafood feast on the beach and beer. For two. For two. I think that is reasonable, and it was really good and really fresh. Best squid, best clams. That is a wrap on our food tour around Da Nang. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to join us next week as we explore Hoi An. But right now, we have more adventures to go on. Bye.